Hello everyone. Here we are continuing the Triumph TR250 tub repair. Got all the major rust areas installed and welded and now we're about sandblasting all of the welded areas to get rid of any burned primer along the edge of the weld or the smoke and to kind of texturize the epoxy primer that is next to the weld so we get some adhesion. It's a dirty job but it does need to be done. I've gone in and exchanged my hood for a set of goggles and this little screen shield. It's just fogging up. It's just too hot and humid out here. The face shield clogged up so much. I spent more time peeking under it than I did blasting. This works well, but it's dirty. And I've sped up the blasting and only showing a small portion of it. Uh, it's just more of this for quite a bit longer period of time. Four hours of blasting and blowing sand out of nooks and crannies later. And I got the car back in the shop. It's looking nicer. really not that much different I guess other than it doesn't have all the smoke still got probably another hour's worth of blowing sand out of nooks and crannies you can see just bringing it in sand finds its way out it's almost a never-ending process a little optimistic, I think, of me being able to blast and spray all in the same day. So I'll leave it here in the shop and leave the air conditioning on overnight. Maybe keep the humidity out. I think it'll keep it from flash rusting so bad. Next step. Just uh, sand all the surrounding areas. I'm not going to sand the whole thing. Just the areas around the bare metal and welds. Get some epoxy on it. I bought some rust encapsulator, encapsulator from Eastwood. And they got a, they sell the nozzle for their frame spray that goes up inside the frame and I'm going to spray it up inside the scuttle kind of protect that it was a bit rusty I got a fair amount of metal in it some of the areas I just had to braze but I think between the encapsulator and a thorough job of seam sealing it should be dry so that's it We'll bring her back when I got the sanding going. Thanks. This is the encapsulator. Trying to focus here on the part number. And this is the nozzle that they do sell separately. It comes with the frame internal spray. 
and I had called or actually emailed Eastwood and they said that the frame material is not paintable so they did recommend this and I said well I, I kind of wanted to use the frame because of the nozzle and they said well no you can buy the nozzle separately and use it with this spray and it worked quite well I'll show a spot here in the middle of how the spray pattern is it's very thin it creeps in all the edges uh, sets up reasonably quick the cleanup is with lacquer thinner or acetone as you'll see here in a little bit I had to uh, use some of the cleanup it's a thin product wicks in between the panels quite well so it's something I will probably use more of here's the spray pattern comes out four areas and you drag it and it's pretty thorough coverage so I sprayed it from the inside um, giving it another coat reaching from a different angle this is where the cleanup part comes in I haven't seam sealed any of the edges yet. I wanted to get this encapsulator in before I had put any primer or anything. And here it found a spot to ooze out onto the front. And I said, well, yeah, that's there. It's, well, we'll just do it again and make it come out really good. So it's covered. So I cleaned everything up, sanded the edges and have to put on a coat of the epoxy primer sealer. The areas are covered and come out. It actually looks pretty good. I'll scuff them a little bit before I put the seam sealer in because it'll be more than 36 hours before I get to that part. I've only done about half the car. Did the firewall inside and out and the uh, rear quarter panel areas rear trunk and floor and it looks pretty nice This area of the firewall up here I'm most proud of. It's a lot of work, but pretty proud to get it back. You get the little half moons in there and get all the panels underneath. And then it's all covered up with the battery and the wiring harness, but oh, it sure looks good before you put all the parts on it. And well, as they always say, never say you're done welding. This is a spot here that I had known about and marked, but it was up high and I didn't see it. patch. I'll take care of that. Oops, this side here has got a little pinhole. Along with the e-pillar brace. I almost have forgot that one. Get those done. And with any luck, we'll get some primer on the rest of this. Well, I'm going to ready to cut out the Mr. Wiper mounting hole. Once again, I'm going to try the technique I stole from another YouTube channel where you cut the two panels out together. And when you hold the angle grinder at the uh, with the cutoff wheel at a 45 degree angle or so, the seam is almost non-existent that you get to weld up. It's uh, the two tapered edges come together and lay down flat.
tuck in the corners and then cut away uh, as I, as you go along and eventually it gets down to where uh, you slice it out and the bottom piece falls off and it's nice and flush. And here I've got the piece just about ready to cut free and I'm hooking the vice grips through the hole. When I was making the pattern for the repair patch I must have dropped that thing three times and it fell down in the scuttle and like never got it out. Of course it was just paper. So this time I've tied the piece in place so that when it comes loose Unless I got real good fumble fingers, I should be able to keep it from falling down in there. And there it is. Throw it on the floor. Here I'm trying to just tack a couple places, three or four, move around and cool it. It's such a small area that it picks up heat pretty quick even with just the tacks. And piece all welded around. Grind the edges down. I'll be using the wide cutoff wheel. And then uh, I'm going to use that little belt sander. I'm rapidly becoming one of my favorite tools. So, uses up belts fairly quick, at least for what I've been doing with it. But it, uh, I like the way it grinds. It's smooth, uh, fairly easy to control, and uh, and it does a different sh scratch pattern than the, the wide cutoff wheel. So it makes it sort of like a guide coat. I can use one, dress it with the other, and then I can go back and I can see the high metal or low metal, as the case may be, and it keeps from cutting away too much.
And I'm dress it down, final finish with a star cut 50 grit Rolex. And smooth all the edges in. It come out uh, very nice. It's um, pretty well metal finished out. Shouldn't need any fill. And another repair done. So next edition we'll hopefully be priming the rest of the vehicle. And I've got the extra couple little spots to touch up with the welder. And the tub will be ready to push to the side. So thanks for watching.